Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook along with Matt Bennett with agmarket.net. Everything in the green on the close today and uh, Matt, soybeans over in the grain side kind of started this thing. Was it weather, the Argentina strike by the grain inspectors or what was it? I think it's a little bit of all of it, but maybe more so uh, this weather situation than anything. I do think there's a lot of folks that are kind of excited about the fact that, hey, we had a pretty good run this last week, but now most of your longer range models, at least over the next two weeks, are saying it's going to be pretty cool uh, with a few bouts of rain. So how much is actually going to get done over the next couple of weeks? It was interesting to, to me to see beans essentially leading the charge and corn was kind of blase to start. And then, uh, you know, you saw some spread unwinding and then all of a sudden, corn market kind of came to life and uh, uh, these corn led the way, interestingly, but by the end of the day, uh, front months are right back at it. You bet. Nopa crush confirming here a record March crush, which uh, kind of continues to say, hey, we got tight supplies out there, right? extremely tight supplies. And so we've got very, very tight old crop supplies. It's a big reason, uh, both corn and beans, that you've seen all this bull spreading going on over the last few weeks. You know, you see uh, July SEP on both corn and beans. People say, what about May, July? Yeah, there's still some of that going on. But as you and I talked a little bit before we got started, hardly anybody's even bidding off the May. And so, you know, it's just kind of a formality, uh, in my opinion. I think it's definitely a sign of strength in the complex as a whole, whether you're talking about corn or beans. But bottom line is you look at a huge difference, especially on corn. Uh, you start talking about old crop stocks and how tight they are. It could be a totally different balance sheet uh, whenever you start talking about new crops. So if you do get over 90 million planted, you know, and uh, we do switch into an El Nino, we do have a pretty decent chance, at least the odds are that you would have, you know, a trend line or better yield. And if that's the case, your balance sheet looks significantly different on new crop than what it does on old crop. So never November beans and December corn both held some pretty key support on Friday that we've been bouncing off of. Is 13 going to hold on beans? Is 550 going to hold on the corn here? You know, as we sit here today, I think Monday couldn't have gone better, to be honest with you. The Monday trade was good. Uh, as, you, as you and I talk right now, it sure seems like those levels should hold. But at the same time, you know, I know a lot of areas that actually got rolling this past week uh, had a phenomenal week as far as planning was concerned. Now, is there going to be some concern about uh, whether or not we're going to get all these crops to emerge? If it's going to be cold and stay wet. Of course, there's going to be some concern. But if you do get past that and you do get emergence, you know, as a producer, uh, I've got to think that given the conditions they went in the ground, uh, that it might be a good time to at least lock in something, even though you think 13 is going to hold. You and I both know that uh, whenever the bean market can move a dollar, you know, things could be significantly different, May, for instance, on that May report. So I think there's an opportunity in here over the next uh, few weeks, but I don't want to uh, sit here on a really good profitable situation too long and do nothing with it because uh, locking in a worst case scenario, in my opinion, is something that we have to do, especially with historically very strong prices. So you mentioned the bull spreads working in corn and soybeans, again, that indication of tight supplies um, and that the elevators, a lot of them have rolled to July's. But what is the cash basis levels looking like out in the country right now? Are they holding together? Yeah, I mean, uh, when the market kind of fell off here over the last couple of weeks, we actually saw some basis levels uh, pretty strong. Basis uh, has been strong all along, don't get me wrong. But I think a lot of folks have felt like during the spring time frame, before you get farther out into late spring, early summer, you know, that basis would be awfully stagnant. But it sure has seemed to me that especially uh, whenever you get into the West, uh, there's a lot of folks that have had to push hard uh, for some needs that maybe they didn't want to go out and uh, oh, I don't know, advertise. Uh, and so what I'm saying, Michelle, is that posted bids have been pretty uh, pretty darn good, but uh, the push has been even better. I've heard about some 20, 30 cent pushes to get through the weekend for some uh, different facilities. A good uh, friend of mine, a grower uh, close to Sioux Falls actually got seven and a quarter for some corn. Wow. You know, and that, that kind of a basis and that kind of a cash price in that part of the world isn't all that common. And so, you know, he's not the only one that's getting that as well. It's going on, especially once once again, west of Mississippi. I think there's some awfully, awfully good prices and basis is very strong. Yeah, and it's going to be hard to get those bushels once the planters all get rolling here, I'm sure. So end users are scrambling a little bit. Um, wheat market, do you think that's weather or war premium we've been putting in the last couple sessions? 
I think it's a little bit of everything. And so, you know, I do think that uh, there's certainly a lot, uh, whenever it gets to the Black Sea region, we understand that maybe we're not going to have near the supplies coming out of that part of the world that uh, we've counted on. Uh, you know, obviously no one's going to want to do business with Russia in the current environment unless they absolutely have to. Uh, we've seen uh, that actually happen, though whether it's wheat, whether it's oil, you know, that if price is cheap enough that people are still going to uh, do some business. Now, the only other thing about wheat is that the weather isn't exactly fantastic. I think they, you know, you really had a hard time getting spring wheat in the ground in the part of the world that it needs to get put in the ground. We all know that uh, Northern Plains and, you know, uh, some of the areas out in the Dakotas certainly have not had great weather uh, for planting spring wheat. And then whenever you look at, uh, you know, uh, some of your winter wheat, I've got to think we've healed up a little bit in some areas, but at the same time, this extreme cold uh, that we had this last weekend, which is supposed to be worse the next go round, you know, like the forecast I already mentioned, that's not what you want to see uh, for a winter wheat grower. So, you know, I think that there could be some damage uh, ahead. And I, I definitely think that there's folks that don't want to be caught short wheat if that's uh, the, if that's what happens in the long run. Yeah, we got that forecast with that big cold blast coming. We'll see if that comes to fruition. We did have a higher weekly close though last week. So technically with the follow through today, is it possible that we bottomed that market? It sure seems like it to me. And quite frankly, this wheat market, uh, several of us had thought we were going to bottom for some time. You know, uh, a few different times I thought we'd bottomed. And then uh, it seemed like we couldn't catch the light of day. At this stage of the game, I feel pretty good about saying that the wheat market's bottomed. Unless there's uh, some major revelation that I don't know right now, I, I feel pretty good about the wheat market, at least having strong support under it. I'm not saying we're going to go to the moon just yet. I think a lot of that's going to be up to Mother Nature. So cattle market last week, record highs in the futures and in the cash, and then we saw a little profit taking and hedge pressure. But do you think we're going to go just back up and retest or take out those highs because cash trade probably will be higher again this week? You know, what What a day again uh, to start the week. I mean, you've got corn up across the board and the cattle market just says, eh, we're going to go ahead and rally as well. Yep. So obviously, well, you look at fats, you look at feeders and the strength is impressive, to say the least. You're going to go up there and take out that 177 and change. You know, I think that it's, it's certainly a possibility. I don't know if you do it right away. I think a lot of it's going to depend on, you know, kind of how's this corn market trade as we get on past the first day of the week. I think that, you know, if the corn market would maybe stagnate or even come back just a little bit, if the forecast would get more conducive to planting, the cattle market probably would take that high out uh, fairly quickly. Now, how high do we go here this early? I mean, I thought 175, 180, uh, three, four weeks ago, something that we would see quicker rather than later, just simply due to the fact that it's a futures market. Uh, but it got there even quicker than what I thought it would. So, you know, I think the people are trying to get out ahead of this thing. We know that the uh, we know that supplies are very tight. We know that the consumer still is very interested in beef. We're getting into grilling season, for crying out loud. Right. And then you look at what's going on in the equities. Equities have held together. So cattle market's got everything it needs to continue to stay strong, in my opinion. Yeah, and futures are at a discount to the cash, cash leading, and that's a little unusual, but we'll take it. Hogs, just quick, is that just short covering? Yeah, I think it's a short covering. And then you look over at cattle and they're rallying. And I just think uh, everyone seemed to be doing a risk on type day today, it especially was. when you look at the ags. And so uh, hogs actually uh, were able to rally. Yeah, you know, hogs I didn't see the light of day for quite some time. It, it sure seems to me that maybe we finally found some support in here. I'm not saying I'm going to be going out and buying them, though. I think you're not alone in that. So <laughs> thanks for joining us. Uh, that Absolutely. is Matt Bennett with AgMarket.net here with Markets Now.